All right, everybody. So welcome back. This is our, our third video in a, uh, in a series of eventual a lot more. We are doing the uh, intro to TA with Marco Rebellion. This is uh, Chris Reichel or <laughs> CJ Reichel. And uh, he is uh, the TA uh, development department over there at Marco Rebellion. So CJ, thanks for coming on, uh, donating your time. Let's break down some oscillators and some uh, information that we can use right now to see potentially where prices are going to go in the cryptocurrency market. So CJ, take it away. Thank you, Rob. What I want to talk about today is just understanding um, a couple different oscillators, uh, Bollinger Bands, Keltner Channels, and then uh, I think we'll finally end it with uh, some of the Williams Alligators. Uh, but I'd like to uh, clear my chart here just to start and then show you uh, the beginning Keltner channels and kind of what they consist of. So Keltner channels are, are very similar to Bollinger Bands in the ways in which they line up, uh, but they don't necessarily, uh, they're not calculated the same. And for that reason, I like to use the Keltner channels just a, a bit more. Um, now, if you look at, at this entire trend, you kind of get the feel that price has always been above that top Keltner channel mm -hmm. when we've been in the existing uptrend. So how can we use this to make decisions when we're trading? Well, what I like to do um, when we're following this Keltner channel very closely is that each time you see price falls below that top band after a massive uptrend. So for instance, we trended above that top band all there same thing here and, and same thing here. Mm. But in that first candle, once we get a close in or below the top band, it usually resumes with a downtrend. Same thing up here and up here. So I always like to look at the Keltner channels and mm. where price is in relation to them and the overall trend. Because if we get kind of a, uh, a decrease and a, a fall from that top band, it shows me that there could be some weakness in the trend and the strength may be depleting. Now, the same is pretty true on uh, the bottom. You know, throughout this trend, this bottom Keltner channel has been a great place to buy. Um, it's really held support. So um, something that I talked about in Trade the Chain just a couple of weeks ago was the fact that each time we had a bullish engulfing candle off of this bottom Keltner channel, it was a very nice buy signal and that the trend was potentially reversing. And we got that uh, right there as well. So where are we in this market cycle now? Well, it looks like we're just breaking above that top Keltner channel once again and are likely going to do something very similar to how we trended above the top band in the past. So a lot of this is very reliant upon um, how price has acted historically in uptrends. But as you can see, um, these have been critical levels for the uptrend this entire way. So that's an example of how I've used the Keltner channels. Um, Rob, do you wanna, you have something yeah. to say? No, I was gonna ask you because just like we did in the second video, remember how we, we, we drew a couple lines and we said, okay, if this was the price at this bottom piece, maybe out on the upward trend, you could see this particular price. So can we do the same thing here with these channels? Um, no, uh, unfortunately not. Nah, there's not a way to project price um, because uh, the, the oscillator and the Keltner channel in general, they are lagging indicators, which means nah. we, can't really, we can't use them to predict future price action. We can only use them as basically support and resistance levels. So for instance, like I said, if we get a close below that top band, that's like a critical message to me saying, all right, that's a severe warning that the trend is, is probably showing some severe weakness. Um, but unfortunately we can't extrapolate price uh, with just raw Keltner channels or RSI or things of that sort. Bummer. All they can just see is this, is this uh, bullish engulfing channel and go, well, it's going to go, it looks like, you know, it could go up. We just don't know how far it's going to go up. And then I guess we would just wait for the next uh, bearish channel to come in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's one of them. What else we got as far as uh, oscillators? Let's get a clean chart here. I would like to look at uh, 
Williams alligator because these ones are these aren't just static these are more moving averages yeah um if i just clear all my drawing tools here but you can see uh, a very similar pattern um between the williams alligator and the actual keltner channels um, what i showed back here previously you can see that these are much different in the sense that they will actually come down and compress with one another hmm. and um in this case each time this phase of compression has occurred, mm -hmm. it's acted as very nice support for Bitcoin in its macro trend. Um, and it continues to do such uh, as today. But the same thing is true with the Keltner channel. You know, you can use this top band here and this green band as a warning if we close below it. Because, ah, okay. because yeah, see, now it's, now it's coming together a little bit. Um, <laughs> But as we trend above that top band, mm -hmm. once we get a close below that top one, that's a warning to me saying, all right, um, you know, it's probably time to look elsewhere. I wanna look for another example of when the bands actually flip negative. Um, here we go. So, uh, yes, I uh, guess my number one pick for my uh, <laughs> price prediction, Voyager. I hold Voyager, just full disclosure. There. I hold Voyager and I'm super biased. I think everybody knows that. All right, here yeah. we go. I'm super biased as well, but in the sake of TA, well, let's <laughs> try to let's try to look at the indicators. But um, as you can see, all throughout the uptrend, this really acted as nice support, um, being that main, that top green band there. However, once we started to fall below it, and once these averages started to turn over, that's always a bad sign for me um, from a bullish perspective, because when these turn over, it means that they've now flipped from support to historic resistance. And now you can see ever since we flipped, you know, the bulls tried to rally price back up, but they were rejected now that the moving averages turned over. Bull trend, you know, what you wanna look for, you want price to be a the averages, you want the uh, Williams alligator to look relatively parallel to one another like this. But mm -hmm. once they once they start to compress and turn over, that's really a, a warning signal that, uh, you know, the trend might be changing. Now, what we have here with VGX that's coming is that, um, you know, the moving averages and alligators here are actually and starting to flip. We get some follow uh, could be pretty bullish for the overall trend. It's difficult to use um, the oscillators, uh, Keldner channels, alligators, predictive indicators. Or they have they're lagging in give us only historic data. However, useful I find when determining uh, support resistance levels for overall trends. So all right, so CJ, thanks so much. That makes a lot more sense especially with those bands. So for you watching at home, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about technical analysis, why don't you come to the pros with uh, CJ over here at Market Rebellion. There's a link in the description. You can learn pretty much everything you need to know as far as TA for starting at a dollar a month. So again, links in the description and it only, and not only does it go over you know, traditional finance, but they really have a focus on cryptocurrencies, which in my opinion, if you're going to really start to do any kind of trading or technical analysis, why don't you go where there's a lot of opportunity and right now that is in cryptocurrency. So anyhow, CJ, thanks so much for stopping by. Any last words of encouragement for the uh, new trader out there? Yeah, I mean, if there's, there's anything I can leave you guys with, it's that uh, TA is not rocket science by any means. I think anybody is capable of learning the basics, you know, in under a year, uh, you know, maybe a year, um, but it is not science. And I think anyone is, is capable of performing, you know, accurate technical analysis. Thank you, Rob, so much. It was, it was an honor to be on the channel and uh, thank you all, right. all so much. All right, everybody. Thanks so much, CJ. Links in the description. And that is it for this series. We will see you hopefully on a new one next time.